driving issues that the media has left behind and helping to, I think, uh, bring policymakers and uh, our kind of communities uh, to issues that otherwise get lost, uh, even though they're incredibly important to everyday life. Um, so that's a little bit about kind of uh, who we are and uh, the organization. Um, in terms of kind of the ethos that I think is really important uh, for you all, um, I think that one of the things that's going to be just tremendously important, uh, everyone uh, needs this, but I think especially young people, is a really global citizenship. And I know that's talked about a lot, but I think for me, um, global citizenship is uh, twofold. Uh, first, um, no matter what your major is, uh, one of you said politics, so clearly uh, you can't solve very many political challenges today, whether it's our environment or poverty or terrorism, uh, without working very closely with countries around the world. And one of the big critiques has been that we haven't been as collaborative as we need to be in order to solve uh, the tremendous challenges, the cross borders that we face and that no country alone can take care of. Uh, if you're interested in economics, uh, you know, trade is going to be the most important uh, determinant of future prosperity. And whether or not you can figure out how to deal with trade and whether or not you can predict what it means and then help people get out of industries that are going to go abroad before uh, they get trained and begin building a life uh, based on a livelihood that turns out not to be very alive. Uh, and if you're interested in the sciences, uh, the research today is all international and uh, the way that funding works for something like malaria or HIV AIDS is that you have researchers in the US working directly with people who are in Africa. And the reason is they both bring different opportunities. People here have some of the most high tech equipment. People there have some of the best opportunities to actually test out and pilot a lot of the different uh, drugs and uh, different ideas that are being brought to bear. And so you have this incredibly global marketplace. And to the extent that we embrace it and are ready for it, uh, I think we will benefit greatly from it. And to the extent that we are unprepared and that we don't uh, engage with the rest of the world and that we fear it, I think it's very likely we'll have a protectionism and an anti-immigration stance that is very dangerous to our future and our prosperity. Um, so that's one part of global citizenship. I think the other part is uh, figuring out how you as an individual um, really live up in your conscience to what are increasingly um, a global neighborhood. Uh, and the way that I would think about this is that, you know, we tend, I think, a lot of times to think that you can be either an American citizen or a global citizen. And I really think that the two are mutually reinforcing. And, you know, when I think about myself uh, and how I kind of um, envision where I fit in my community. Um, I'm part of my family, and then I'm part of kind of my town, and then part of uh, this country. And I think each of those actually is uh, kind of mutually reaffirming. What I mean by that is, you know, there's this community out there that I'm a part of, and partly because of the family I come from and the education I've had, there's something very special that I can contribute to my community. And part of the way that I make sense of what it means to be to be a part of my family and what it means to have that connection um, is because of the way I bring that to the broader community. And I really think that one of the things that we've lost in the silly debate over whether or not you're a patriot or you're a globalist is that there's something very special about bringing an American identity to the world stage. And seeing how you, as part of this global community, can actually help in this mosaic uh, to bring a piece of what is a very challenging puzzle. And so I really think that being an American and being patriotic about that also means that you see what role you can play uniquely in the world. And if it's an issue like climate change, that means we are the biggest polluter. 25% uh, of the world's greenhouse gases. Uh, we are also one of the most innovative and one of the most uh, entrepreneurial countries in the world. And we have a unique structure and a unique economy and a unique education system and unique resources. 
So what that means is that when you think about where American citizenship fits into global citizenship in this issue, it's we have a tremendous uh, moral dilemma because we are polluting at a rate that is stealing the environment of people around the world who don't benefit from the products of that pollution. And we also have a huge opportunity to be the most innovative player on the block on an issue that speaks to uh, the greatest human concern. And so I think that figuring out how you match up your citizenship here and your citizenship globally and make sure that they really feed into one another and how you see them as part of this really reaffirming relationship is tremendously important. And I think that it will enhance the ability to make a difference in the future. Um, so let me just say a few things about uh, what I think are kind of uh, key um, things for you to be thinking about as you, uh, many of you at least, uh, think about uh, graduation and, and what's next. Um, and kind of some tips that I've learned in the, uh, I guess, five and a half years now since I uh, graduated from college. Uh, the first is I think it's really valuable, especially if you're interested in social change work and making a difference, uh, to try to find a mentor. Um, and I think that it's uh, very uh, difficult sometimes to feel comfortable approaching people and just asking them uh, for time to kind of throw your ideas out to them and tell them what you're interested in and uh, get their feedback. Uh, but one of the things that I found most uh, kind of uh, helpful throughout my kind of post-college uh, years was <coughs> to really uh, be asking everyone I can find questions about the different ideas I have. And those have led me in a lot of kind of unexpected places that I think have been really valuable. Um, so one thing that I think is tremendously important, and it's more difficult, I think, after you graduate, is really uh, making sure that you're ambitious and aggressive and kind of pulling aside people whenever you can, uh, when you think they could uh, help you and you're thinking through what you want to do or um, how you want to create change and really telling them about your plan. Uh, the second thing I would say is that it's um, really important uh, to be passionate. And, you know, I think that our generation sometimes um, has a too cool to care uh, uh, aspect where um, there's a sense that, you know, there are a lot of issues out there, but, um, you know, ultimately uh, it's not possible to solve these issues. And um, those tend to be the thoughts of people that don't solve problems. And I know that from the work that I've seen and the people, you know, from uh, my college years that have really done amazing work, exactly what they wanted to do, almost all of them uh, were failing and were um, very passionate anyway uh, for a while after they graduated. And I think that that kind of uh, ethos is incredibly valuable um, for really making stuff happen and getting that uh, achievement that you want to realize. And then the final thing I would say is that it's really important um, to always uh, be ready to break the frame. And I think one of the uh, most difficult things about uh, going out uh, beyond college is that you know, there are certain templates about um, how you're supposed to think about issues or um, how you're supposed to talk uh, that um, really try to um, keep, I think, a very standard logic. And I think that uh, one of the things that's been exciting for the work that I've done is that from uh, you know 2002, uh, we as an organization and um, with a lot of the, the young people that we engaged were very um, adamant that we wanted to focus on security and thinking about um, America's role in the world in more ways than just thinking about terrorism. And we really wanted to think about what our moral compass was and what our obligations to the environment and to poverty. And what I think was difficult at the time that we got started was that there really were not very many people that saw the opportunities or the um, priorities that we did. And I think what happens is that a lot of times what that leads you to do is you try to just fit into the dominant frame. So you say to yourself, you know, if this is the main issue, I'll try to frame everything just in terms of terrorism, and I'll say, you know, this issue and that issue. I don't really care about climate directly, but it's important because, you know, it might create environments where there could be 
Paris. And I feel like, you know, what you do is you kind of embed everything that you think into a dominant frame. And the problem with that is that I think that there are moments where, you know, you have uh, people that kind of go to these uh, uh, crisis points, I would say, and they're looking for a kind of new frame. And I think if you're someone that's, you know, thinking in new frames and willing to kind of tell people what you think at all times, um, over time you really create an opportunity for people to see the world.